Hi, welcome to the AMC News Dispatch. I'm Melissa Bowen of the Public and Congressional Affairs Office. The Army Materiel Command, through its labs and research and development centers, is at the forefront of developing, integrating, and leveraging breakthrough technologies for the soldier. And these technologies not only include state-of-the-art weapons systems and equipment, but also include finding ways to help our soldiers do their job better. AMC's Simulation and Training Technology Center in Orlando, Florida, is working on an advanced, ruggedized, physiologically-based, standalone patient simulator that will help provide Army medics with a much more realistic training tool. A lot of people call it a medic trainer, but really it's a trainer for unit medical skills. From the combat lifesaver, self-aid, butt aid, all the way up through combat medic uh, and different levels of care. It provides the capability to train as you fight for the first time on the medical front and that you have a body to deal with. He's running a full physiology, meaning he can die if you perform the wrong procedures or if you neglect to perform the correct procedures. Since he's tetherless, you can now put him in a blown up vehicle in a relevant combat environment and, and suddenly you have an impact on not only the medical piece but also on the uh, combat piece in that you have to rearrange your priorities to take care of your injured while still completing your mission. So it, it, uh, it works as a great individual and collective medical trainer and it also drives home the impact of casualties on the unit commanders on their missions. First thing we did was we got rid of the wires. The Army is fielding the commercial tethered version of this system, which is an excellent trainer, but it is a body tied with cables and hoses to a set of external equipment. The first tenet of care under fire is move your patient out of the line of fire. We cannot have a limitation in the simulation introduce negative training that can uh, possibly injure soldiers. So uh, what we've done is we've removed the, uh, the wires. We now have a body and as they come up, he will be bleeding or uh, he will show all the signs and symptoms you would need to assess and treat him as a patient. And the uh, instructor is now off to the side, either controlling it or running a standalone uh, scenario. All right, what you have here is a classic polytrauma scenario, multiple injuries, different parts of the body, same event. If I were a medic coming up on him in the field, first thing I would notice is he would be bleeding profusely from the traumatic amputation, probably bleeding a little less from the abdomen. And his head wound, uh, we've, already, we've already put a quick bandage on to try and save his eyesight. So uh, if I was under fire or if I was, uh, uh, whether I'm under fire or not, first thing I have to do is I have to stop the bleeding. The number one preventable cause of death on the battlefield is uncontrolled hemorrhage. So, and and the, uh, the Army has addressed that by giving every soldier their own cat tourniquet. So first thing I would do, one, try and calm them down. Two, I would, uh, I would immediately go to a tourniquet. I wouldn't even mess with pressure bandages. I wouldn't mess with any other form because it's just waste time. Tourniquet, rapidly applied just above the wound. tighten down until the bleeding stop. One of the features of the simulator is we recognize when the bleeding has stopped. We measure back pressure in the line. And so not only does the bleeding physically stop, but it, it, it stops in the physiology in the computer so this patient will stabilize. Being physiologically based, we measure the amount of blood loss, physiology automatically compensates. From that point on, I if I had to, I'd move him to a, a point, a casualty collection point somewhat uh, safe and then I would start addressing his other injuries. His abdominal wounds, probably non-compressible. I would, I, would, I would use one of the new Hemcom bandages where you would, uh, you would take it out, tear it into strips, pack it into the wounds. One of the other things that you're seeing here is these wounds are brand new, they're prototypes. We're, we're managing an Army and Technology objective to significantly improve the realism of the severe trauma that we're simulating. So not only are we looking at new materials to simulate the wounds, but we're making sure that we take care of training requirements like having the depth to be able to pack them with the new uh, hemostatic uh, bandages or hemostatic agents. Uh, other things we're looking at is adding smells. Smells are a very powerful and very difficult uh, roadblock for caregivers to overcome. Any caregiver, whether a, com a soldier, self-aid, buddy aid, to a, a, a medic on the street has to overcome the smells of battle, burnt flesh, burnt hair, the, the smells of the body, the body odor, the gunfire, uh, diesel fumes, 
all these smells mix and create an almost visceral reaction in, almost, in, in most of the medics. Let them overcome it here. Let them do it over and over again so that they're not uh, reluctant to get in there and save that patient's life because they do all their hesitations here, they learn they can overcome it, and then uh, when someone's life is on the line, they just go in and do what they need to do. Providing the most realistic hands-on training devices for our Army medics is critical to ensuring they are the most prepared to save lives on the battlefield. Well, that about does it for this week's edition of the AMC News Dispatch. And don't forget to visit the AMC website and click on the news and information link on the left-hand side for the latest items of interest about the command. Thanks so much for watching. We hope to see you next time.